What's up guys, Uncorrupt here once again today taking a look at what I'm calling Pile of Weapons Warrior. I actually found this on Twitter. Twitter is a great place to find Hearthstone decks if you're interested and you know the right places to look. And uh, as you can see here, this is from uh, Stenzi. I don't personally know a lot about Stenzi, but uh, he appears to be a very good player. And he came up with an interesting concept for a deck that I also wanted to play myself, see if I could have some fun with. So you can see here he says, uh, sorry to break the meta once again. I feel like that's kind of a uh, you know clickbait type thing. Um, breaking the meta doesn't necessarily mean what people say it does. But anyway, all that aside, uh, Weapon Warrior is insane. 18 and 6 from 98 to rank 16 Legend. 10 and 2 against Demon Hunter. Guide and code in the comments. So as you can see, that is uh, at Stenzi underscore on Twitter. If you'd like to check him out, check out his guide in the comments. Um, I copied his deck and then I actually changed a couple of the cards around so I'm gonna have the deck code for uh, the deck that I'm playing in this video is gonna be in the description of the video you might have to expand it to be able to get to it but uh, we're gonna take a little bit of a closer look at this deck and then uh, we're gonna play it and see just how well it performs on the ladder so here's the deck and you're probably gonna look at it and you're gonna notice that it has a lot of the same tools that control warrior uses but if you're anything like me, Control Warrior just really isn't that interesting of a deck. It's not that hard to play. It's actually pretty boring to play, at least in my opinion. I'm not really into those really long, drawn-out control games. And then also, it's uh, you know, if you hit these Control Warrior mirror matches, you're talking like a 20 to 25 minute game. So it does have a lot of the control tools that you're going to see in here as we go down the list. But the big difference is, Sinzi's idea was, let's cut the dragons, let's cut Kazakazan, and then let's just run more weapons. So the win condition for the deck is actually hitting your opponent in the face. And again, just a personal thing for me, but being able to take your weapon and swing it at your opponent's face, pretty satisfying feeling in Hearthstone, significantly more so than, you know, the typical Control Warrior playstyle. So as you can see here, um, lots of weapons in the deck. We're running two blacksmith hammers. These are often going to get traded just to increase their durability. There's an Outrider's Axe, and there is an Ashar and Trident. Of course, this puts the Sunken Trident at the bottom of your deck. So you can be able to potentially draw it to have even another weapon. Of course, the deck is also running Lady Ashvane. This is probably actually one of the worst legendaries that was released in the newest set. But uh, it finds a home in this deck, being able to buff your, your weapons. Both equipped weapon, weapons in your hand, also weapons in your deck. So just kind of fits the theme. And a pretty interesting idea here. Um, the rest of the deck, again, it's just control tools. You know, we're running shield slams. Two copies of Forged in Flame. We have a lot of weapons. Being able to turn that weapon actually into cards is, uh, is pretty good, pretty strong. Frozen Buckler. Um, ways to be able to dredge the bottom of our deck and potentially buff a weapon if it just so happens to be at the bottom. Of course, from the depths, uh, one of the best warrior cards to come out of this set. Definitely a strong play there. More armor. Uh, Viper to break your opponent's weapon. Of course, if you're seeing Paladin, you would probably have more than enough damage in the deck without Rust Rot Viper, even to be able to kill a Paladin that's played Karyo. But um, Viper's going to help that matchup go a little bit more smoothly if you happen to see Paladins. Shield blocks, good old-fashioned card draw, and uh, of course, armor gain. A uh, couple of school teachers. This is something that was not in Stenzi's deck, but school teacher. The card is just so so good. Um, specifically with this kind of warrior, you can hit uh, from the depths, and then you can also hit removal like bash. You might be able to find another shield slam, so on and so forth. I'm a big fan of school teacher. This was maybe uh, certainly one of the top five cards of the set for me coming out of Voyage to the Sunken City. Only one copy of Brawl here. You don't really need more than one. Uh, Captain Galvangar, this is pretty interesting. This is going to be a 6-mana 9-9 uh, nine -nine, um, in almost every case, just because we're gaining so much armor with the control package. And then, of course, we run a good old Mr. Smite. A uh, nice little way to help us finish our opponents. And, of course, Nelly. Nelly, again, um, probably one of the top five cards to come out of the set. Um, and, in my opinion, the best Colossal minion to come out of the set. Like, this thing is insane with the 1-mana Pirates. Uh, Math-wise, 42% chance to be able to discover Smite off of Nelly. Um, in reality, I find that it's a lot more than that. I feel like my opponent always finds it, and quite honestly, I feel like I always find it too. So, I'm not going to hit it every time, but we do run a natural smite in the deck to be able to combine it with one mana pirates for a nice little finishing. Running the hero card here, Rakara. Then, of course, two copies of Shield Shatter to be able to clean up our opponent's board. So, the deck is going to play pretty similarly to Control Warrior, except we're going to get to have a lot more fun by equipping these weapons killing minions, and uh, most importantly, just being able to punch our opponent in the face. So uh, that's the deck breakdown. If you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Now I'm going to hop into some gameplay. 
Off the bat here, it looks like we're going to have a uh, match against Warrior. Um, it's pretty much got to be Control Warrior. I very rarely see Pirate Warrior anymore. Um, just really nobody playing it, so... Um, a bit unfortunate, I don't really enjoy this matchup, as I mentioned earlier. Um, it's a little bit better with, with this particular weapon deck. But, uh, you know, when I queue up games for this video, I just queue up consecutive games. Win or lose, it is what it is. And, you know, I'm not going to try to dodge a, a Warrior matchup for this video, um, just because I don't like it. I feel like there's more that can be learned, uh, both from you and from me as well, by just uh, playing the matchups that the game gives us, rather than trying to cherry-pick matchups or cherry-pick videos. So... Um, really would have liked to have had a From the Depths in our opening hand. Um, looks like we missed it. So we're just going to be uh, doing some trading here in the early part of the game. And really hoping to be able to hit a, uh, a From the Depths. Um, card's just so good. Especially if you can hit From the Depths into like a, a on turn 3 into a turn 4 Nelly. It's just really, really strong. So um, good armor up here, but I'm actually just going to do a double trade. We're going to trade the second Blacksmith Hammer. So that's now two, five, three weapons in the deck. And we can just trade this as well. So on turn three, we at least have a play. We'll get to take a look at what's on the bottom of our deck. And then uh, turn four, School Teacher is pretty good too. Five, four body is going to give us a little bit of a board presence. Our Brawl. No reason to not just play this out. So this is really good here, uh, being able to see the bottom of your deck. Um, we're going to actually pick from the depths, and then next turn we'll from the depths, and then on turn five we'll be playing a four mana Nelly. So definitely uh, want to make sure that I don't pick the wrong card there. I want to make sure that I'm picking the uh, picking the from the depths so that I can get the Nelly out a couple of turns early. And our opponent's just going to weapon up. This is totally fine. He's actually stripping off his own armor. We don't really care how much armor he gains. At most, they run one Viper, and we could just continually trade our Blacksmith Hammers to be able to get more durability. And then you can see right here, we're just going to take this Nelly. Uh, we'll be able to play Nelly next turn. Nelly will be the sixth card in our hands, so we'll have room to be able to hold the three Pirates. And just the uh, the body that's going to be on the board, the 5-5, five, five, as well as the 2-6, you know, our opponent's going to have to do something about it. And if the 2-6 sticks around, then, you know, we'll just be finding other things to do until we get access to our cheap pirates. Hopefully we've discovered a smite. I swear it feels like it's almost guaranteed, man. I, I find smite every time. I feel like my opponent finds smite every time as well. The math, um, somebody that I trust told me that the math on that card was a 42% chance to discover smite. It feels like it's a lot more than that, though. And we're just looking for, like, you know, good cards. This is pretty good. Give our hero a little bit of attack. Um, this would allow us to dredge. This will be good. I mean, we're definitely going to have weapons just because there's so many weapons in the deck, so we could consider Cannoneer. Also, buffing our other pirates would be good. I'm going to take the Cannoneer, I think. And it looks like we actually miss on the smite. Oh. Buffer Fist is just a good all around card. This gives our weapon an extra attack. It's close. I'm going to take the Puffer Fist. Puffer Fist is one damage to everything on the board, not just the hero. Um, whereas that uh, the Ratchet Pirate was uh, just increases your weapon by one attack. Pick me, pick me. Demand the cannons. So we're going to have our one mana pirates. Um, likely we can just save them until we draw our smite. Again, that's just going to give us a big... A big attack turn. Or maybe we decide that, you know, we want to play them individually. Just to try to keep a little bit of pressure on our opponent. If we go too wide, we know that they're going to have a shield shatter the same as we do. So there's no reason to run all of our pirates out and just let them get cleared. Just something to keep in mind. We know every card that's in their deck. We know what they're going to be doing. waiting for our opponent to finish up here. Likely a hero power from him. They're thinking about the trade. They're making the trade, okay. So, could just be a school teacher here. Kind of depends on what we draw. Another shield shatter, so our hand isn't really doing a whole lot right now, so 
We're just gonna find something to do with the school teacher. Um, and I actually think drawing a card here, we'll gain some armor and draw a card. Since our hand's not doing anything, we want to dig a little bit deeper into our deck. And we find a shield slam, so again, our hand's just not really doing a whole lot right now. We drew all the removal in a matchup where our opponent isn't going to be making boards and likely isn't going to be playing a whole lot of minions, uh, certainly in the early game. And we've got both shield shatters, we've got our brawl, both shield slams, so we're really looking to just hopefully draw a weapon, uh, really draw some more cards, and uh, really start to be able to put together some damage on our opponent's face here. So, unfortunately, four weapons in the deck, and we are not finding them. Outside of the blacksmith hammers that we traded on turn one and turn two, that's been going pretty well for me, though. You can see up here, 9 and 3. 75% win rate. Again, as I say before, I say it all the time. Stats from one person don't matter. You know, it's not a 75% win rate deck. Those don't actually exist in Hearthstone. But, I mean, the stats are here, so we might as well talk about them. Here's the Rakara. Um, I think we just go for it. We'll drop the Rakara and uh, just go ahead and swing into the 4-5. Then the following turn, we'll be able to hero power the 2-2 for a little bit more armor. So at this point, I mean, we really could just try to dump our hand and then use a uh, Forged in Flame to be able to draw 5. And we could just dump our pirates on the board. may not be bad. I mean, we don't have to have the pirates combined with Smite, and that's one thing I would encourage you to think about as you're playing uh, this deck, or even just Control Warrior, you know, Smite doesn't have to go face, Galvangar doesn't have to go face, depending on the matchup, say against Demon Hunter, you might actually use those to just clear minions. Again, we have plenty of damage in the deck from our weapons to be able to, uh, to be able to kill our opponent. Another Forged in Flame, so... I mean, we could dump our hand out and then draw off of this, but I'd like to be able to swing with at least some kind of a weapon. We know for sure a Blacksmith Hammer's on the bottom. So Hero Power this leaves us six mana. This would only leave us four mana left by the time we did that. We'd be looking to play all of these pirates here, so... I'm thinking we just uh, slam this. We'll go ahead and play out our three minions that we have in hand, and then we'll just swing face here. Got to do something a little bit more proactive. Keep our opponent's armor stripped down. And uh, try to force them to have some kind of removal. Gets rid of their armor. And, uh, does a little bit of damage. And then we'll just pass the turn here. Unfortunately, floating three mana, but there's nothing else that, that we would be looking to do, so... Just hoping to really be able to draw a weapon here. Again, we know a Blacksmith Hammer is on the bottom. We have another Obsidian Smith and another From the Depths to be able to look, take a look at it, potentially pull it up. And then, uh, you know, we should still have three other additional weapons somewhere in our deck. Hopefully they're not all in the bottom six or something like that. That's going to make it really challenging to win. Brawl's an interesting choice, so he'll be able to clean up the board with his weapon. A shield block from him. We're going to answer with a shield block of our own. And this is a 5-3 hammer. I want to go ahead and equip it. You can just equip this and ping. And then uh, at some point, I'm probably going to try to use this to draw five cards. May even actually throw away something like one shield shatter. So the only wide board that we really have to worry about would be a uh, raid boss, in which case we could like shield shatter, shield slam. Outside of that, we're not super worried um, about wide boards, unless our opponent's actually able to get down his uh, Kazakas on. So I believe uh, they've only played two dragons so far, so still a few turns away from that. And only about halfway through their deck, so Kazakazan shouldn't really be coming down anytime too awful soon. 
I believe this control warrior probably runs a viper. If they viper this, you know, we're a little sad, but not too sad because we do have a lot of other weapons in our deck. Um, it's just a matter of really being able to find them. So we're going to draw card number eight. Here's his own Nelly. We're going to kill this simply because he's going to end up burning pirates and overdraw. It's pretty interesting that that they would play this. Assuming they just hero power, they're going to lose two of the pirates they discover. And they're going to burn a card. So it's an interesting choice from our opponent. I guess their hand is really doing nothing as well. I would take this to mean that their hand, they just don't have a lot a lot of things in it. So they'll only burn one of the pirates now. Plus their overdraw. So let's see what they got. Um, no smite for him, so I think this means they're going to get the South Sea Captain and the Cargo Guard. Thuskar Trawler burns, and then they're going to burn their top deck. So that, that all seems pretty reasonable. question is, do we want a Shield Slam on this? I kind of think we do. Maybe we don't. Is it a Brawl? Surely Brawl can't be right. Just swing hero power. Even just shield shatter. Shield shatter hero power and then we still get to do our damage face. Seems pretty good. Swing face. And we can actually just draw cards here if we want to. going to draw five and it's actually going to cause us to overdraw but we're not really all that uh, actually we're not going to overdraw so that may have actually not been um, the play that I wanted to make um, to just equip the weapon like that but uh, I let the timer run down too low so I was just trying to get something done this prevents us from from overdrawing and burning a card here plus it allows us to equip another weapon now we've got some options so we'll be able to dredge up the blacksmithing hammer which is going to turn it into a 6-4, I believe, which is going to start looking pretty good. Only 10 cards left in the deck. We still have Smite and Galvangar. Yeah, I mean, that's doesn't really matter. We'll shield Slam the 10-10. Overall, not a super, super great play um, for our opponent. So there's the Galvangar. Galvangar is 9. We actually have 14 right now. Let's start with a trade. Wow, there's Smite. Um, we don't have any other pirates left in the deck. Ashvane is not a pirate. So the question is, do I just want to... Uh, so I just want to try to do damage to his face and set up lethal for next turn. He still has a shield block and two heavy plates. Okay, so we know this is happening. And we know this is going to happen. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and drop the smite here. So next turn, we have 14 damage. Um, it's likely that our opponent can get above that 14 health mark just with armor. But this spins our mana cleanly. He's going to have to deal with the smite. Let's see what kind of an answer they come up with here. Nice drink of water to refresh our brain. I feel like it helps me play a little bit better when I'm drinking water. Also, when I'm talking a lot. I feel like I play better when I'm talking through my plays, though. Like when I'm making a video, talking about it out loud, sometimes I can catch myself before I do something stupid. Not always, but sometimes. So the Cargo Guard is going to heal them to 12. The question is, do they think that's enough? Going for the bottom of their deck here. And 
they're healing. I'm assuming they're removing smite. Yep. Okay. Another from the depths. So they're at 21 and we have 14, so we're gonna need to uh, need to find more damage. We're gonna start with a trade. Lady Ashvane, that's pretty uh, pretty decent here. So we could shield shatter Ashvane and and send five face. Then they're gonna have to deal with the Ashvane. Or we're actually sending six face because this weapon gets buffed. Eight cards left in the deck, so at some point, you know, we could potentially use a forged in flame to guarantee the uh, blacksmith hammer draw, even if it's the last card. They're at 19, we have 9, 13, so we have 15 from hand. Again, assuming that they're going to be able to gain some kind of armor here. But we are presenting lethal. Um, our opponent likely doesn't know that, though. Shield slam to remove a taunt, but uh, both the Nixie and Drakes have been played, so we're not really concerned about any more taunts this game. And if they just play like a Kazakazan or a uh, even a raid boss of Nixia, okay, there's the raid boss. So we're gonna brawl this away and uh, just hope that the 8 8 doesn't survive. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to lethal our opponent next turn because we needed that 5 damage from Lady Ashvane. But our opponent's also almost out of cards. And I would assume that they're really not expecting the Galvangar here. There's a school teacher. So we're going to brawl first, and then we'll probably uh, take a look at the school teacher. We've got the shield slam available if the 8 8 survives. If it doesn't, we're just going to ignore. First one out, baby. First one out. So we're going to ignore that. Um, I guess we'll take the Shield Slam here. So this play did cause us to miss the uh, two damage from the Hero Power. We do still have exact lethal though with the Galvangar. Six and nine is fifteen. And that assumes he's able to remove the 5-4. No two health minions on the board. We know they're not going to be able to hero power to be able to get four health back like that. And it looks like Heavy Plate is the last armor gain card that they're going to have in their deck. Oh! He's able to create a two health. So unfortunately, I did not catch myself from saying something stupid that time. There's the heavy plate. Um, we can just shield slam the 4 3. And, I mean, do we want to just draw four cards? I can draw four cards and then equip this and swing. And that's going to get us closer to the blacksmith hammer. We'll also have, we have two heavy plates that we could trade, or we could even just Finley be able to get to the blacksmith hammer. It seems pretty reasonable. I mean, this is going to be the same amount of damage, so... I'm going to do that. And then we can actually just from the depths. Blacksmith hammer. Fuel block to get it out. I'm going to go ahead and use the Shield Slam. They won't know that the Noggling has the additional Shield Slam. Then we will equip our hammer. Get our opponent in the face. And we'll just play this just because we have the mana. Opponents at 19. We have 8. We have 17. We're still looking at two turns to be able to kill him. Okay. 
Not really concerned about that. Um, it is going to enable Kazakazon. If they feel safe, they'll probably just play the Kazakazon next turn. We can just play the Finley, right? Only way we die is if this is actually Galvangar, but they've played so many dragons that I assume Kazakazan is their win condition rather than Charge Warrior Galvangar. Go ahead and play this. And this. So if they play Viper and if they break our weapon, we have exactly 11 damage next turn. School teacher, possible healing here. They could hit a couple of different things. Heavy plate. They could hit shield block. Guard the city. Nineteen, and we actually still have exact lethal, right? Six, eight, seventeen. We have access to seventeen, so heavy plate is the only thing that would prevent us from killing him. Okay. Perfect. So we just kill our opponent. We're going to let Galvangar finish him. So you can see here, this was just against a, a typical control warrior, and uh, our win condition was just a little bit faster, a little bit better. Let me close them out. On to the next game. So unfortunately, we are in uh, warrior purgatory here. I'm assuming this is going to be another control warrior. Very, very outside chance that it's pirates, but uh, likely it's just going to be control, so unfortunate. This might actually be a game that gets cut from the video. I really prefer not to have yet another Control Warrior game. And our opponent in typical Control Warrior fashion, they're going to rope the mulligan, they're going to rope turn one, they're going to rope turn two when they armor up. Just another reason why you got to hate the Control Warrior matchup unfortunate all the way around. Play it, play it, quest, play the quest. Give me a solid and play the quest. Oh, baby. This guy's already playing the same deck. That's a bit unfortunate. We got a mirror match on Pile of Weapon Warrior. to uh, venture a guess we're actually able to play this better than our opponent we're going to play this on three and then we're going to coin ash vein on four that'll get us a six six in play it's going to buff our weapon as well as every other weapon in the deck strip off all of their armor so we'll go ash vein on four We'll go school teacher on five, possibly also with the uh, one one to go along with it. And then of course we're going to be rounding into Nelly on turn seven. Hopefully we can hit a smite in there, and we're going to see if we can aggro down our opponent, damaging himself. You love to see it. Turn our weapon into a 4-2, which is awesome. It's also going to put the Sunken Trident on the bottom of the deck. Which we could take advantage of with the Finley if we wanted to. 
Although the bottom of our deck isn't really looking too good. Armor, removal, and uh, just the 3-2 weapon isn't all that great either, so... I'm going to continue to look for, uh, hopefully, other things to do, rather than Finley. Next turn's pretty solid. The 5-4 isn't bad at all. The 6-6 six, six gets the punch face. That's going to be really good for us as well. Also, we would have the possibility to be able to dredge up the trident. Looks like they do have an answer. But, again, it took them a minute to figure out that they needed to remove the 6-6. Six, six by playing one card. We just want to draw cards here. We can just draw four cards. We're kind of going to need to draw cards and be able to trade our blacksmithing hammers. Kind of works as get against us a little bit with the Nelly. But this game is probably going to go a little bit longer than I want it to, so let me just go ahead and draw some cards here. There's a From the Depths, so we'll actually be able to uh, dredge up our other weapon. Uh, which is the best of these options. So that'll give us another weapon to equip. And, uh, you know, we may even want to uh, just go ahead and, and start using armor to be able to buff the Galvangar. Also, we'll be able to empty out our hand a little bit to potentially play the Nelly. Also going to take care of his board. Um, eight cards in hand. Just play the armor. Really be nice to be able to play two cards here. I mean, we could just armor up and throw down the Viper, but at likely at some point we're going to want to uh, break his weapon. So I think we're actually just going to do this and this. We'll trade the Viper. So really just trying to spend cards here. I want to be able to get some cards out of my hand so that I can play Nelly. And then we'll have room to be able to hold the pirates and not overdraw. And our opponent's just gaining health, so... A bit unfortunate. Alvin Gar is already active. Like that. Smite, of course. We're gonna take the 5 attack, and we're gonna take the 4 attack. And... We're going to go ahead and swing. So 6, 5, and 4, that's uh, 15 damage. And then we can combine that with 9 from Galvangar. Unfortunate. So we lost all of our uh, all of the pirates in Nelly. Really wasn't expecting the uh, Smothering Starfish. I believe this card was in Stenzi's original version, so we got a Stenzi lover here. Unfortunate. Sure that there's even anything good on the bottom of our deck. I'm gonna play the school teacher. And we'll take the slam. Being able to draw another card is gonna be good. We just go face, stripping off our opponent's armor and dealing damage here. It's looking like either Brawl or a Shield Shatter. There's a Shield Shatter and he's swinging with a Blacksmith Hammer. Opponent's at 27. As of this moment, we have 9 in hand. I would almost consider rolling our hand over with Finley, but we're really going to need the Galvangar. It's a Rakara. I think we just play the Rakara. 
push as much damage as we can. This lets us push nine. Gives us a weapon for next turn as well. Our opponent still has two cards they kept in the mulligan. I have no idea what those would be. If you keep cards in the mulligan and you get to turn 10 and still haven't played them yet, I think you're probably keeping the wrong cards. And I would say that that's true for every deck. If you're keeping something in the mulligan, it's because you want to play it. It's a key card in the matchup. No idea what those two cards might be. Unless they just uh, roped out and didn't actually make a mulligan. I don't remember if they did or not, but again, typical control warriors. Rope the mulligan, rope every turn. Control warrior is actually how you grief the ladder. If you're playing control warrior on ladder, you're just trying to make other people miserable. It's not about you winning games. It's not about trying to have fun. It's about trying to make somebody else miserable. Maybe that's what you find fun. Seven, nine. We actually have exact lethal. And our opponent gives up. Maybe they knew we had exact lethal. That's going to do it, guys. Unfortunately, two warrior games in a row. But again, I always feel like the best thing that I can do is to try to show a real-life experience. I queue up consecutive games on the ladder. Unfortunately, I hit warrior into another warrior. But as you can see, uh, this deck can beat Control Warrior more than enough damage. We could have continued to trade our Blacksmith Hammers to get even more dura durability, which would be even more damage. And then you can also see the Mirror Match here. Um, I don't know that we played it better. Maybe we just drew better. But uh, you can also win the Mirror Match, so that's always nice. Um, the other main deck that you're going to be fighting a lot of is going to be uh, Demon Hunter. Again, Control Warrior, I think, is slightly favored against Demon Hunter, so it's the same play style. You would want to look for things like Frozen Buckler and Shield Shatter in the Mulligan. Keep your opponent's board clear. You know, you need to have an answer for Drek'thar on turn four. And then at some point, you know, you just start pushing damage face. The Demon Hunter is going to be killing himself using the uh, Dread Prison Glaive, attacking whatever minions you put down, so on and so forth. So I think this deck is positioned pretty well to be able to climb on the ladder based on what I'm seeing right now. And it's certainly fun to play. I would encourage you to get out and try it. If you're still here, I know this video was long. Hopefully it wasn't too boring with the Warrior Mirror matches. But thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You'll find more content like this. Thanks again. Good luck out on the ladder.